a, a brother from um, uh, young African American brother from from um, from the Bronx called Percy P. And you know when I when I first started learning the, the, the history of hip hop, I learned that there were so many good arguments for reparations that were based upon the royalties that that were stolen from people, and the idea that there were so many people that were just left out of history based upon like what their contributions to the game were, and, you know, just to see Grandmaster Cass have his lyrics stolen, and the most famous song that we know, the hip hop, the hip hop, the hip hop, yeah, that, all, uh, that a lot of them bars were taken from somebody else, and, mm-hmm. you know, basically, Don't Shrimp was one of the first great songs that they were, and, you know, I, I learned about these things, they, they, the people that were there were really honest with me, another friend of mine that I made from back in the day, uh, was Ali Shaheed Muhammad, mm. who was part of a, a group called Tribe Called Quest. And, man, I gotta say, he's, he's one of the realest dudes I ever met. He was so honest about like what, what the game was like back then. You know, kind of the pitfalls and how, you know, they were getting, getting screwed over by the label and, you know, what it's like to be in a group versus being a solo artist. And he was like, yo, you lucky you're a solo artist technique. Like, you know, when you're in a group, you always have to deal with other people's stuff. And, this is at the same time that he was going through problems with the tribe and, and stuff. But it was, it was crazy because, you know, God rest his soul, he would talk to fight. And I, 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 Ali Shaheed Muhammad is a, is a brilliant man and a peacemaker. And I, I'm, I'm glad that people got to a good place, at least, you know, when... when yeah, uh, before he transitioned, right. Back, but, you know, I know Ali Shaheed Muhammad is, is a good brother. He definitely... He put me on to a lot of things. So, I, like I said, I've had a lot of people in the game that has helped me over the years. Lord Finesse, definitely a, a good dude. And I just met everybody in the game by passing you, passing you one way or another. Mm-hmm. But it was just some people, they stuck out a little bit more because of whatever, like, you know, like, I, I, I'm much better friends with uh, Rock Cam than I am with Big Daddy Kane, for example. Mm-hmm. But these people are all, like, they're like titans in my eyes. You know what I mean? I'm one right. of the, I'm one of the younger gods. These people are tight. They they, they created the world I live in. So I can never I can never uh, uh, not have respect or pay homage to those people that came before me. And that's what I learned, and and that's where I get a lot of my success. And not just learn from their success, but hey, the OGs on my block told me a long time ago that if if the, if the, the big homies just told to you about all the, the cool shit that they did, they're not teaching you nothing, my dude. They just bragging. You. It's when one of the OGs start telling you the shit that fucked his life up. That's when they teach you. And that's when mm-hmm. you gotta listen to her, you know? And you reflect a lot of that in your music. You you have a storytelling teaching style. And it's one of that's one of the reasons I gravitated towards you. You know, you you can spit, but you're not spitting for the sake of just saying a bunch of words. You're not throwing the word salad at people. I really appreciate that about you and your style. Thank you, brother. Um now when what was your break? What was your big break? Because okay, because me and you from the same era, era, I call it second generation hip hop. Because Mel and Kaz and those guys, that's first generation. We we part of the second generation. What what made you first? What was your big break? And second, what made you go? I can do this. Well, I think what's funny about you mentioning that is that that's actually one of my big breaks. <laughs> fact that people thought I was from the second generation. I never released music in the 90s. I was actually incarcerated until 1999, and the first record I ever put out was at the end of 2001. Wow. I was so closely associated with that era because I was freestyling back then. I was in battles. So mm. um, I came into the game a little bit later than a lot of other people. So the, the, the superstars in the underground when I was coming up were people like Pumpkinhead, uh, Team Grey, um, company Super flow, dope. just strongholds, so breeze that were flowing, poison pen, and a bunch of other people that formed that collective. And it was just like that, that the, the, the time in which I spent just honing skills with other people, I think also helped me out. There was a, a group called Natural Elements, and a dude named Jigsaw the Puzzler that used to rock with them. So these, these are people that. I, I always mention their names because I, I got to give credit to who, who helped me get my craft to where it was be. There were a lot of really, really dope storytellers back then um, in, in that transitional era. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. like uh, oh for people that want to listen and if it was a Christian rap group I believe but they were called the Boogie Monsters I remember them song, I remember them they had a song called Old Man Jacob's Well I thought that was a dope story um, I thought that the uh, Tupac told a lot of great stories too I think that some rappers they would tell one story in one verse and then veer off and never finish the story and I'm glad that I <laughs> I learned how, how that made songs seem awkward. So right. Like, Yo, if you tell a story, you gotta follow through. You gotta hear the end of this fucking story, homie. You can't just be in here like, oh yeah, and then this happened. And then, nah, man, what the fuck happened, man? Don't 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 tell me no half story. Yeah, that's dope, man. Uh, so okay, it's 2001. What was your big break? Um, I think in 2001, I kind of got to to be um. I think what what? Because I don't, I don't, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't think I really had a so-called big break. I don't think that there was any one particular day in in, in my life. Because for sure, I did the battles, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the battles wasn't. They weren't. They weren't things that were making me the most popular. Like they sure I, I battled plenty of people and you know, people respected me for that. But at the same time it it, it, it was really just a consistency, like me going on tour and staying on tour. It wasn't because I went on tour once, it was because I was like, nah, I'm leaving and I'm not coming home, you know. Like I am gone. I did uh I did a lot of touring with uh other acts. I opened up for so many other people, so I can't say it's just one break. You know, I opened up for for Wu Tang, you know, one time I opened up for um, for for Rage Against the Machine. Like I did so many. I, I did a show open up for Biohazard. Like mm. any anybody, I didn't care, brother. I didn't care what genre people were from. I would just I would go in. So I can't I can't say in all honesty that I had one big break. I think it was a lot of different things that happened in my mm-hmm. career that led to that that enabled me to to really maximize the potential that I had in terms of making music. You're independent, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm president of Viper Records, which is, uh, which is the label that I'm at. And, um, you know, we, we have a distribution deal and we manufacture everything ourselves, make our own t-shirts. I sell them on, on my website, viperrecords.com. And I tell people I appreciate, you know, if, if they can't. And this is, just, this is my mentality because I, I think it's, this, this is the generation I grew up in, mm-hmm. and when I was a, a, I handled, because I was intergenerational, like between those two generations, okay. I handled the transition much better. So when other artists, and, and, you know, not to say that it was older artists, but it was mostly older artists, would get upset, be like, yo, this is bullshit, these niggas pirating music, or, I'd be like, yo, man, you can't be mad at these kids. You got to accept the fact that that's how it is now. And so when kids came to me and they were like, oh, you know, I got your CD for free, my nigga. And I, 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 other artists would argue with them. They would get insulted. They would be like, fuck you. Don't try to don't try to play me, homie. And I'd be like, what are you doing, man? This nigga went and stole your music online and you're mad at him? Like, yo, you got to get with the program, my dude. These people love you. You got you to gotta, you gotta focus on that. Right. So when people came up to me and said that, they'd be like, oh, your technique, I, I got your music offline. I say, thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. And if, if, if you can, do me a favor. And they'd be like, what? I'd be like, yo, um, burn that shit for someone you think would like it, please. And mm. people would look at me, wow, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. That's what I mean by networking those relationships. You know what I mean? Properly use social media. So y'all up there looking at ass all day. Wonderful. Everybody loves the big boogie. But what about looking at people who follow the same type of uh, 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 world view that you have? People exactly. Really Like-minded trying people. Things, trying to do something different. You know, you got to be working with them, retweeting what they do. You know, thinking about what what's going on with, with, with the lives of the people that that are in your community. You know what I mean? What, what can I do? Sure, presidential politics seem like a sham. Fine. But what about local politics, you know? The, 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 the local sheriff, the local person in charge of this and that. Come on now, that, that's actual functional government. That, that's different than everything else. That's actual things that impact your community right there and then. And that's something you can change, bro. 
smoke, and that that's real because that that that's not just posturing. That's not for the TV. Those are people that can change the ordinances in your town. Those are people that are in charge of giving, making sure that the bank doesn't just can't skip out on, on giving our people loans like they have in the past. No, we deserve shots. We're not asking for nothing but what we're owed. You know what I mean? We don't need no handout. We need the opportunity and the money you stole from our people. That's it, man. That's all we want. Point blank, period. And I, the irony is, that's exactly what I was saying right before you came on. It's about solution based. We know what the problems are. We know what the discrimination is. We know where all the, where all the bodies are buried. Now that we know that, let's come up with a solution instead of always saying what we don't, what we can't, and what we shouldn't. I hear that, brother. Man. And, you know what, man? Uh, how much more time do you have? Enough on, I, I went over the 45 minute mark. Okay. But if you ask me one more question, it's not a problem. How can we help you? And I put it. I put your website in my chat room already. And I'm a, uh, when I t- when I tweet out everything after the show, I'm gonna include it on that. How can we help you? And what would you? Uh, uh, what do you think we can do as a community to move towards uniting brown people? Because I don't do the black and brown thing, because we all brown. I think what one thing that we can do is, I would tell people, listen, if you, I, I'm, I'm not asking for donations. I'm not asking for your money. You know what I mean? That 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 that's not that's not what I'm here to do. What I'm asking you to do is to donate your time. If you mm. can't donate to a cause, man, spend an hour teaching children how to read. You know what I mean? Do the part of the work that's not that's not glamorous. You know what I mean? Be out there. Do, do do a rebel army run in your own neighborhood. You know what I mean? Find out where the elders live. So this is what made me want to do what I did. I grew up in, like I said, 1978, brother. Right? We, we from around the same time. So mm-hmm. PK, when we were kids, right, TV had how many channels? <laughs> Four or well, five. Yeah. Ten, right? And I tell kids that don't know, yo, fam, you know TV used to turn off at night? And they said, shut up. But no, I'm serious, kids. You used to turn off at night. No, it didn't. Yeah. There was no TV from, from, from let's say, 12 o'clock to 4.30. Then it came back on. Then it was that, that screen, the color. Yeah, it was and I said, well, the stripes. elder people, the elders in my community, they grew up in a time where TV only had four channels. And then it was only black and white. And when they turn on the TV, they hear one channel say that the virus is a hoax. They hear the other, other channel say that everyone's going to die. And it's just fear mongering. Then they hear another channel say, oh, this is nothing, nothing's going to change, you know what I mean? Oh, blah, blah. So they don't know what to believe. And what I mean by that and, and why it's important to me to continue to, to raise these facts is because, you know, if, if our elders are vulnerable, let's not forget that they are the ones that take care of the next generation of our people. So, you know, I was told that you're, you're once a man and twice a baby. Mm. So if you come into the game, you make it. Let's say you make it, brother. Right? Let's say you don't get killed. Let's say you don't get run over. Let's say you don't get shot by cops. You don't succumb to to, to depression or to to drug addiction. You don't get hit by by a car. You don't randomly get get, get shot in a robbery. You make it all the way through life. You know what your reward is? Your reward is to forget everything mm. and become old and be be it be have have it be necessary for you to be taken care of by other people. Man. So just remember. You gotta, you gotta approach this with some humility. And how y'all can help me is by doing that in your own community. Like doing the shit that's not sexy, it's not pretty, it's not fun. You know what I mean? But that really actually does help people. That's how y'all can help me. And if you can't, you know, I mean, if you want to support the music, please call the Viper Records, buy a t shirt, you know, buy a CD. I know that people don't, don't listen to CDs as much, but get a physical copy of a vinyl. You know, they're like $15. We're gonna have a barter vinyl. And I, I pledge the, the proceeds to go to two organizations, one that's helping uh, the children of Syria and the other one that's working in Yemen. So these are wars that the United States is carrying out right now against uh, brown people that are out there being killed for some kind of political strategic, strategic mobilization, which is not actually for their lives. Which is why I, I always tell people, man, we have to go back and talk to people from the homeland as well, and that's one thing y'all could do for me. Go to Africa, go to Latin America, or if you can't go there, talk to the people from there and say, hey, how many times have you been in a country where people 
all of a sudden start talking about 